okay everyone welcome back to another video on the channel today we're back on gt sport and we're back with the daily race c that is on today um for anyone watching this video the day it's uploaded and um, this is on now and um, we managed to get an okay race we've had a few messy races some scruffy races some very good races we've won i think two races and had some disasters in terms of um a weird ghosting bug with uh, back markers that happens it, it's nothing i can do about it it's, it just seems like a random bug in the game but um we'll explain that one in another video if i, if I get around to doing it. hopefully uh um, polyphonic can have a look at it um, it just seems to be when um, the ghost car goes or spins out when they're a back market even though you drive through them they, they turn to a solid car and it wipes you out it's happened to me twice now in this race today so a little bit annoying but not much you can do about it as you can see there starting the race p2 we managed to qualify in a 1 minute 15.0 it was in the top 10 stars although it's probably not in there now it's probably a little bit out we need to if we're going to go back onto it i will probably get this lap down to a 14.8 or something um i think i've got potential to get 14.7 to 8 so if i do go back onto this race that's what i do but although i might give it a rest now because i was on this morning and i think i've lost about a kilogram in weight from this morning um, it's a hot day in the uk today and this was an extremely, um, these races are really intense on GT Sport. When you've got equal competition, you know, McLaren 6, one of the fastest drivers on GT Sport, especially when he's on it, like he is at Brown's Hatch in this GR2. He was really on a charge and he was driving a pretty much perfect race, as you can see there. We're following behind. We're trying to just stay with, you see the fuel mixtures, um, we're changing it to level 2 sometimes through that sector there. I didn't want to do too much um, fuel saving. We've done runs where we've done a lot of fuel saving and I wanted to try something out different in this race. What I wanted to do was try and just do a minimal fuel saving. So just putting it to um, fuel mixture 2 as and when I needed it and just trying to save a little bit, not too much. You can see there the guy behind us, um, very close. You can see that on that extra um, viewpoint I've put up there in the top left hand corner middle of the screen sorry at the top you can see that he's just fractionally behind us we're about about a second behind you can see there mclaren six and we're just trying to make sure that we can stay reasonably close to mclaren six and keep this guy in third place just behind us as you can see there he's managing to stay pretty close and um, just probably about three four attempts behind us at this stage so attacking out of that corner i do have a little trouble still with this car i'm having a little bit of trouble in terms of putting the power down and not losing traction on the rear of the um, the car when I'm coming out of some corners. However, it's not as bad as it was at Brazil. I'm definitely getting there with it. I feel more confident the more I drive it. And I did start enjoying driving at this track. It definitely is the stronger car for this track to use. Uh, the um, the Lexus I didn't try here. I did try the the um, Nissan Nissan GTR. Is it um, the GR2 um, GTR? That was also okay. However, it just didn't seem to be able to carry the speed that this car can through the corners. This car is just able to carry so much speed through the corners, and it's just a little bit stronger at this track. And it, it, it was about three, four attempts at least a lap, I say, stronger. So to lose that every lap on, on a short lap like it is at Brown's Hatch, it'd be too much. So you can see, most of the field went for this car. I think a lot of people didn't realise that there is a library um, editor available. You can take people's libraries because i think i was one of the only cars driving with an actual library on the car all the others were just with the stock library and um, so it did look a bit um, weird all these blue nsx's hopefully a lot of other people will start getting them libraries downloaded and stuff and we've got we're gonna have another video coming up very soon to do with our um, libraries that I'll, I'll, you know for myself um, to do with my youtube and i want to try and get people to help me design some libraries but we'll do a video for that when it comes to it because i'm not the best at the library editor and um, i've got some decals uploaded already and um, although i might need to make some changes to one of them um, it's not it's something just a little bit strange with one of the um, decals that i've uploaded for myself but um, we'll get around to doing that in another video as you can see there in this race lap three um we're staying with we've, we've managed to hold on to McLaren 6 we're not losing too much ground he's managed to pull away a bit there I think he was probably maybe using one one mixture for the first few laps all the way trying to build that lead up and then he was doing the fuel saving because he seemed to be able to fuel save and maintain his speed a lot better than what I'm able to do and that's something I need to work on in GT Sport I st the two areas I, I still need to find that final few attempts I think in terms of the race pace and qualifying pace and I also need to try and be able to keep my pace a little bit better when we're saving fuel we're not the worst at the game for um, saving fuel by any means but what we need to do is get our level up a bit um, compared to 
than some of the other drivers. They're definitely a little bit of step, a step ahead in terms of being able to save that fuel and probably doing a bit of lift and coasting and stuff. And that's something we'll learn. And we'll probably do a video on eventually to, I think I, one thing I want to do is do a video on fuel saving. Try and give some advice from my what I already have, have learned and um, try and get some help out to you guys to, in terms of being able to save a little bit more fuel and try and keep your pace. So I'm going to tr work on that over the next few weeks or month or so. Trying to be able to work on keep maintaining speed and saving fuel. And once I feel I'm confident enough and I've got my, my skill of doing it a bit better, I will probably do a video, a tutorial video on how to try and manage your fuel a bit better. We're not, by any means, you can tell we're not the worst at it, but I think there's things we can do in terms of coasting through corners a little bit more and um, being a bit more cautious on the throttle when in mid corner and um, lifting coasting into corners. That's something we need to start doing a little bit more. Um, there is a few a few drivers on GT Sport that are extremely good at the fuel management and that's something we need to work on to really up our game a bit. Unfortunately, F last night's FIA race, we had a force feedback buzz. I think I mentioned it in um, the Suzuka video where the, the force feedback goes completely light. We started the race, we qualified, we messed up qualifying a bit. We were P3 or 4 though, so we were in okay position. I felt confident for the race. But as soon as the race started, we had no force feedback at all. The wheel went completely light. The only force, back, force feedback I was getting was when the rear went slightly loose and it just ripped the wheel out of my hand. So there was nothing I could do. I had to, I had to actually exit the lobby. I couldn't even carry on driving. It was that bad. Um, so unfortunately no FIA race today I was a little bit annoyed and um, I'll probably leave tonight's FIA race as well and um, try and think about what I'm going to do I'm probably going to go for the manufacturers um, most weeks because um, being from the UK it is pretty really hard to get in that top 24 stars race I'm, I think I ended up 14th in the world but there was three other UK drivers ahead of me in the top 24 so it's just so hard for the UK drivers and some other nations to get into that top 24 stars race and it's, this is one of the other reasons why I feel they need to adjust the um, two drivers because it's, it's not really fair. That, I feel like finishing 14th in the world rankings should be good enough to get yourself in that top 24 stars race but it's not so. What we'll probably do is do the manufacturers um, series because I think there's a more chance of me getting into the top 24 stars race and it's it's an enjoyable upload especially with the quality of the drivers in that race we're going to be able to get some good uploads if we um, keep keep racing that um, 24 the t obviously getting into the top 24 stars racing and racing it as much as we can so you can see in this race we're doing, still doing reasonably well there um, lap six now and we're pushing hard you can see i, I i've definitely got the the, ha the hang of this car a lot more than what i did when you saw me at Brazil, it's still nearly catching me out. You see there on that curb, but that that would happen pretty much on any car that you drive around. That you can flick you out. I think you've seen it in the Porsche as well when we was in the GR3 racing here. It nearly flicked me out on, in that car as well. We're managing to hold off the guy behind. I felt pretty confident being able to hold him off because I was saving a bit of fuel. And I don't think he was saving the fuel as much as what I was at this point. So we're doing well. We're, we're maintaining consistency. The lap times: two minutes seventeen point three one. Then a 16.7, then a 16.6, and then a 17.1. So the consistency is there, and we've been fuel saving at this, at this stage. So we're doing quite well in terms of our pace. We're not pushing, um, obviously, a 100%, because you can see there we're in fuel mixture 2. One thing I was trying to do is use that fuel mixture 2 when it was getting on the power and the car was a little bit um, loose and a bit risky. So I thought to aid myself in terms of putting that throttle down, I'll use fuel mixture 2. Helps me out in terms of the traction of the car. Um, also this corner sometimes using it there and then put it to one when we're out the, into the clear and I can then start accelerating. Obviously as well going through this middle sector you will find that using fuel mixer 2 or 3 through like this fast right hander. This is one area where I need to see how it's maximum on the power there. I need to be a bit more cautious with how I'm putting the power down. Maybe putting like 75% throttle input there will save a little bit more fuel and you won't lose too much time also. And then obviously once the car's in a straight line then put the throttle down maximum. Um, it's just one thing I do need to start doing is just trying to think and like remember everything about the fuel safe and I know how to do it it's just that when you're in the situation of a race where you've got someone breathing down on you one second behind you and you're trying to chase another guy up ahead who's two seconds ahead and he's, he's, tr he's trying to concentrate so much and um, you do forget things but like I say, I, I, I'm happy with how this race has gone. You can see there we're onto the lap now, eight, lap eight out of 15. This is the lap we're gonna pit. Obviously I wanted to do the longest stint on the first section and then go for the shortest stint on the last section. You can see 
We'd do, been doing a bit of fuel saving in this stint and we managed to stay reasonably close to McLaren 6. He's, he's been the fastest I've seen on this race today. I've not seen anyone as fast as him, but also there is probably going to be faster drivers that haven't really raced it. But so far from today's racing, what I've, what I've done, he has been the, the fastest driver that I've come across. Um, RC Racer um, is also a very fast driver. He was pretty close, but I felt like McLaren 6 had had the ability to save the fuel and keep the pace a little bit better but you can see there we're still trying to fuel save the guy behind us is really close have a little watch on the middle screen now at the top and watch as he goes through this corner he gets on the, the curb he spins it round 360 degrees and catches it um, a really impressive catch by him there to be fair we'll have a little watch of that again he, that curb again really causing issues for drivers as you can see there he's coming through this is the cur the corner before he's okay there a bit on the dust there then he's going through his right hand corner and just before he goes into the apex of the corner watch the dust kick up you saw that bit of dust it's flung him out to the wide he's got on the curb got on the power and he's just about caught it and saved it and he actually only lost about a second and a half two seconds something like that. he actually maintained his p3 position so he just about got away of that you can see myself there just going around the corner and he's now 3.5 seconds i think he's lost about two seconds in that so he got away of that big time and we're going into the pit stop phase so let's have a little look at the fuel comparisons between ourselves and mclaren 6 and the guy behind us so mclaren 6 on 14 um, percent fuel we're on 11 percent fuel so we only we were only three percent down on him through that phase and um, what i decided to do for this stage of the pit stop was I wanted to overfill a bit so I could run the one mixture and drive a little bit more consistently fast without having to worry about the fuel mixture too much. So you can see I went to 7.6 litres, um, 7.6 of fuel, laps of fuel, and I think he went a little bit less. Um, the guy behind that did this spin, he actually got undercut in the pits because he was obviously being more aggressive during that first thing and someone else actually overtook him and was now driving in P3, you can see there. TRL Philo obviously as well, didn't pit and then I think he was pitting at the end of this lap. So he's now the new leader and we're just just over four seconds, about 4.4 seconds behind McLaren 6 now. And I wanted to compare the difference between saving fuel. Um, we obviously managed to save a similar amount of fuel to uh, McLaren 6. It wasn't far off, so he was obviously driving reasonably aggressive as well. And we lost about two point, I think about 2.5 seconds during that stint. So I wanted to compare it as if I drive maximum and Obviously, I've got to drive clean as well. I still feel like I'm missing 100% consistency, but we're definitely getting there. I wanted to see what the difference is if I am able to just drive without the warrior fuel in terms of lap times to McLaren 6. So you can see there, we're four seconds behind him at this stage. He lost a little bit of time behind um, Philo, I think, as Philo was going in the pits and um, he got caught up behind him. So he lost a fraction of time there. So we're about four seconds behind. So the aim now is to try and see how close we can stay with him for these final six laps and see if we've got the speed through. I don't know what he did in the pit stop in terms of what percentage of fuel he put in. Um, I didn't catch that when he came out of the pit. So my guess is he probably would have done something similar to us, but not to the same uh, as much as, of a, as we did. He was probably still doing a bit of fuel saving during this stint. So I just wanted to try and see if we could stay close. And as you can see there, we're 4.1 seconds behind now as we're trying to get on with it a bit more. You can see the, the way the car's moving now is a little bit more aggressive. We're, we've got that one fuel mixture going and we're trying to push now we've got a comfortable lead to the driver behind us 3.5 seconds i think it is there so we've got a comfortable gap to him the guy who was behind us is now in p4 he obviously made that mistake and then had to put more fuel in so he he was i think he would have been about the same distance as this guy is behind us anyway even without that spin because he had to overfill his car because he had used a lot of fuel during that first stint so now fairly comfortably in p2 i've just got to try and get in the zone and keep every lap as consistent as i can and see if we can start pushing i know the annoying thing is this is the only thing that is really frustrating for me at the moment is like trying to get that lap down consistent consistently i have hit a 16.1 and twos and threes but they're not consistent enough that's where i really need to start working on being able to just pump in them 16 ones 16 twos just consistently at the moment i felt if I went for a 16-1 every lap or 16-2, the chances are I would probably spin at some point and make an error. So you'll see my lap times probably going around the 16.4 to 5 mark and not pushing. I'd say I'm pushing about 99%, 98%. If I go to 100%, I know I can get closer in terms of 16.1s and um, what McLaren 6 is doing, but he was able to do that not pushing 100%. So that's that's where I need to start improving. I need to be able to get there. And it's, it's more so with practice with myself. I, I'm the type of driver that 
has to practice a fair bit at tractions and really get into a rhythm and then every day I'll come back I'll be a little bit faster and stuff so I'm guessing everyone's like that though but I, it does affect me more so so that's the only thing I will say about um, geez, what with the races being daily is it, it does take it, it suits people that are like McLaren 6 is able to just get on it straight away so we're not doing too bad though we're definitely improving gradually we're slowly getting better at the game and um, hopefully when we can get ourselves um, some better pedals some load cell pedals that should help us a little bit in terms of consistency um, I do think I need them because I'm very heavy footed so I really do want to try and get myself some V3 pedals from that Fanatec with V3 pedals and try and get the um, there's a little thing you can get that converts it so that you can use it with um, a T500 or, or something but then again I'm probably one of, one of you some of you guys will have noticed I've not been streaming so much recently and it's because my T500 fans are um, broken at the moment so they sound like a jet fighter taking off and it would just sound terrible on stream i don't want to i don't want to stream and sound it would just it would just look and sound so unprofessional with this noise coming through the stream so unfortunate at the moment that's that's why we have to just do constant uploads as you can see there now the consistencies you can see our lap time 16.5 16.6 so we've definitely got the consistency to do mid 16s pretty much every lap um, with this one fuel mixture and we're driving reasonably aggressive that corner I was having to be a little bit cautious on because I was so scared that that corner try and flick me out and you can see we're managing to hold pace with McLaren 6 at this stage he's 4.5 seconds ahead he was four seconds pretty much as um, Philo went off into the bits so he's gained about half a second on us over about three laps or so so we're definitely getting better but <clears throat> like I say some of that is because we're probably using that one mixture throughout this last in he went for the um, slightly lower fuel in the pit stop just so he can you know, come out a bit ahead and um, probably doing a little bit of fuel saving through some of the corners maybe going to fuel mixture two or three and then he's obviously going to be saving that fuel so not being as fast as he possibly could be but you can see there someone else has took the fast the guy who was behind us in the pit stop phase He's took the fastest lap of the race with a 16.0, uh, six, yeah, one minute 16.075. Um, that's a very nice lap. I, I can get to. I think my best lap has been over that four, four or five races that I did this morning was a 16.1. But again, he, he wasn't able to do it consistently again, so he's probably suffering similar to myself. He's got the the one lap pace, but to be able to do that one lap pace every lap would be pushing it a bit, and that's what I felt like. So I felt like the safer option was just to keep the laps on there. Um, 1 minute 16 as you can see there again on lap 12 it was a 16.6 and we've we pretty much kept it really consistent we're staying fairly close to McLaren 6 we're driving as hard as we can I want to be able to capitalize if he makes a mistake although that's very un unlikely with how consistent he is at this track with this car he, he was really the only race he made a mistake was the first race he entered um, he was in the lead and he lost it on lap one went out of the after the tight hairpin going into the fast left the left hand corner he lost it there that's the only mistake I've seen him made and he got disconnected in one race as well so they're the only mistakes I've seen other than that he was faultless um, driving pretty much perfect so you can see we're, we're doing okay though the first sector was <clears throat> something I did notice I was struggling a little bit on compared to other races and I don't know if it's something to do with the force feedback the force feedback was a little bit heavier in this race than what it had been in previous races I've noticed obviously with the GR2 cars there is definitely an issue with the T500 in the of force feedback like I said with the Lexus it completely disappeared in this race it was a little bit heavier but it was perfectly drivable I don't feel like it was losing me any time really the only place was probably through turn one I felt like the heavier wheel was holding me back a bit and I was maybe losing a tenth or so there because I was hitting 15.8 uh, before we did this race so we were going through there on 16.0 so there was a couple of attempts there we could have probably been a bit faster as you can see we're still maintaining consistency though looking at the delta times we're pretty much identical from every sec every se single sector split we're pretty much identical and we're just trying to push and push and keep it keep control of the car we've managed to build up a really solid lead to p2 uh, p3 there we're actually over six seconds ahead and we're keeping the gap to uh, mclaren six to 4.5 seconds he's not pulling away we're not gaining on him it's, it's pretty much staying very static and uh, that that was fairly um, good to see that we weren't losing too much time to him but like I say he'd probably have to do a little bit of um, fuel saving as well whereas we were able to go fully aggressive so overall though since the pit stop obviously that pit stop where he was able to put a little bit less fuel in them than we did he gained about 
I think he was 2.5 as we went into the pits, and when we came out of the pits, he was near enough five seconds. So we gained like two, two and a half seconds in the pits, and he's gained about half a second. He's, you know, he creeps over to five seconds in the lead, and we'll try and get that back onto five seconds or something through the lap as it goes on. So yeah, he's prob we, we probably lost out about, what was it, two and a half seconds in that pit stop by having to put that 3% extra fuel in, and then we also put a bit more on top of that. So it does lose you out a little bit of time, but it's quite interesting to see would it be worth just going flat out pretty much throughout the whole race and then doing the same in the second split because I, I don't think there'd be a massive difference for myself. Um, the safer route is definitely doing the fuel saving as you can um, make it a little bit more consistent on the corners and stuff. So you can see there, we're going to go over the line 10 seconds ahead of P3 and just under 5 seconds behind McLaren 6. So a nice, nice race. Um, a confident race for myself um, in terms of driving this car. I did need to be able to get up to speed with it and I felt like that race we finally started getting a bit of consistency together and we managed to put some solid lap times in. Um, nothing special in terms of lap time, it was just consistent driving and we take home some really nice um, DR points there because I think we'd, we'd lost a few in um, some of the other races where we only finished sixth or something because of um, issues with the game and also mistakes that we have made so an, a nice result there and we're going to be back with more of these races very soon um, i probably might do the there's a chance i might do the fi race tonight on one of them and um, not too sure yet but if not we'll be back probably doing the fia tomorrow night um sunday night for the manufacturers championship i think that's what i'm going to do I need to pick my manufacturer that I'm going to go with. I'm not 100% sure yet. We'll decide that um, as we look at the race schedule. I want to pick a car that's going to be strong for the final race. So that's going to be the aim to make sure and to try and also be able to get in that top 24 stars race. We don't want to go the most competitive car because that's going to then be harder to get into the top 24 star race. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Um, hope I can put, I point out some things that you can do to improve your own racing with this car. Um, we're going to probably do a track guide for this car at this track uh, and also some more track guides that i've got planned coming up soon as well and keep on with these daily races and stuff and fia races so make sure you sub the channel if you haven't already subbed click that notification button so you don't miss any future videos and once again thank you for watching this video thanks again everyone